Hello, everyone. This is Coach Clayton, and this is my uh, Women's Empowerment Interview episode. And today we have Maria, who will be our guest, and she is going to discuss her obstacles that she's overcome personally and professionally. Welcome, Maria. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I am so excited to discuss, uh, you know, some of the obstacles that you've overcome and just chat. So let's yeah. Just, yeah, let's just dive right in. Maria, where, where do you want to start? Do you let us know something that you want to discuss personally that you've overcome? Well, so something I want to discuss personally that I've overcome, I think, is something that has set me on the career path that I've done, which is being a mom coach, a certified mom coach now, which I'm very excited about. Um, and that is my own personal story with having postpartum depression and anxiety. It was uh, a very difficult time in my life. It was after my first son, who was very much wanted, and we didn't try for a very long time. It was very normal. Everything was very normal mm -hmm. um, up until maybe like halfway into my pregnancy that I started to feel not as excited about this baby, which was so weird because mm -hmm. I really wanted him. Yeah. And then, you know, I wasn't excited. And then we, um, for birth, I was planning to have a natural birth at a midwife led center. Mm -hmm. Very set on that. We did all the classes, prepared, everything was supposed to go swimmingly. My son decides that he needs to come a couple of weeks early. So that was a surprise. I was supposed <laughs> to have two weeks off work to relax and, you know, <laughs> take some me time, except yeah. I basically wanted to labor the same night. That was my last day of work. So wow. yay me. <laughs> so, you know, things happen. We go into the, uh, into the birthing center. Things mm -hmm. are okay. A little weird, but okay. Have a very rough night. And mm -hmm. in the morning they check me and they're like, well, you haven't progressed. We're feeling something weird with baby. Mm. We have to send you to the hospital, which was a huge shock for me. I'm sure. Yeah. So that was the first blow. Then we come to uh, the hospital and they do an ultrasound. And it turns out that he turned breech in labor. Okay. Yeah. So, so nobody delivers breech, at least not where I was in the U.S. And I think most of the U.S. does not deliver okay. breech. So okay. that was an automatic C-section. Nobody was in distress. Nobody was, no heart rates were dropping, nothing like that, but still that's the only way to deliver him. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge blow. And, um, you know, the C-section for me went okay in the sense that it wasn't painful. The doctor did a fantastic job, but I didn't respond nice. well to the anesthesia to be strapped down because I was shaking. Oh, so gosh. my son gets pulled out. I can't hold him. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband was the one holding him up until I came out of the OR, which was, you know, it, it's hard because it's yeah. like, you're not the birth you expect to experience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I come out of the OR and like, they hand me this baby, feed him. And it's like, well, I'm in pain, can't move. What is yeah. this thing? And that was sort of our start. Like I was numbed by drugs and just had no, no mm -hmm. connection to him whatsoever. And so it was that plus then we had issues with breastfeeding. It was just a snowball a effect that like intensified this depression that already started during pregnancy and it just continued. It was like the hits just kept on coming. Maria, and, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. I noticed that you said that it happened, that you started feeling this way during your pregnancy. Yeah. I've always heard after, but never during. So, so tell me a yeah. little bit more about that, because that's very interesting. Yeah, so actually, um, something that people don't talk about, like we, yeah. we do know that now roughly one in seven or one in five women, depending which statistics you look up in the U.S., uh, mm -hmm. are going to have postpartum depression or po yeah. postpartum anxiety. Uh, what we don't hear a lot of the times, which we should from our doctors, is that about 50% of those cases start during pregnancy. Wow. Yeah. And, but nobody talks to you about that and nobody checks on your depression during pregnancy. It's like, oh, well, you're pregnant, must be the hormones. You're just moody. That's true. Right? And it's hard. It's hard to differentiate what is depression and what is like, yeah, your hormones are really out of whack. You've never felt mm -hmm. this way before. So, yeah, I was one of the 50% of women for who the depression started during pregnancy. Wow. So you 
you finally have your child, you are home, you, you're home now. What are some of the things that you've had to go, that you went through, like not being able to truly bond? I mean, it felt really awkward. It felt mm -hmm. like everybody loved my baby except me. It okay. felt like I was a bad mom. And to add breastfeeding issues on top of that was, you know, a whole other layer of crap to sort of sort through. Like I'm healing, can't bond to this baby. I'm in pain. He's not getting the milk. He's crying. Yeah. We wanted to do natural. So we didn't want formula. So having to do that mental jujitsu of like, do I give him formula? Do I not? Because every time we go into the doctor, they're like, if he drops any more weight, we're yeah. sending him to the hospital, right? Like it's just so much gets piled onto you and it just it, it makes it worse it doesn't allow you to like it doesn't allow you to bond with the baby because it's just you're like fighting off one hardship after the other yeah so how did you get through this how did you yeah. <laughs> I, like, I sometimes look back on it and I don't know I was one of those mm -hmm. people who vehemently denied that I had depression. Yeah. Yeah. I was the one who showed up with a smile on my face yeah. every doctor's appointment. I'm great. Motherhood is great. Mm -hmm. Things are great, except I would come home and I would just fall apart. Yeah. I think the only way I sort of got through it is I started my blog. I started sort of getting my thoughts out there and writing about it. It felt cathartic to mm -hmm. at least have that because it's like, I didn't really have any too many friends to talk to because most of my friends haven't had kids yet so they didn't mm -hmm. quite understand I had a couple that I talked to that did understand but nobody's had such a difficult time mm -hmm. with it so they could relate to a point mm -hmm. um, my husband tried supporting me as much as he could even though it was not easy for him yeah. and somehow together we made it through and mm -hmm. I started feeling better uh, and part of it I think it was blogging and at least having a community of other moms to connect to, even if it was virtual, but it was, yes. I didn't feel so alone. And it was so important for me not to feel so alone. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was something that got me through back then. Yeah. And then when I had my second son, it was different. Um, usually you are more prone to uh, having postpartum depression, postpartum uh, anxiety with any subsequent birth. Mm -hmm. Luckily with him, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I it was a, a good pregnancy from a mental standpoint, mm -hmm. had a VBAC, super proud, experienced something yes. I never thought I could, which was post-birth euphoria. Yeah. I was not tired for two weeks. I was like yes. looking at him, right? Like <laughs> all these great things that you always talk about birth, like the powerful birth, like mm -hmm. all of these wonderful things, they happened for me the second time, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, as he was getting older, he was a horrible sleeper. My husband okay. and I, for the first year, slept in turns. Basically, mm -hmm. one person slept one day, the other person slept the other day. It was brutal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on top of that, we have our other son, who is a toddler mm -hmm. and is jealous and is having a hard time. So it's just a lot. And I yes. felt the depression coming back. Okay. It was it was different. It wasn't the same way as it was um, after my first son, but it was like like your typical depression. And I felt like I was in that semi-depressed languishing feeling mm -hmm. until recently to be honest when I finally through all of my searching of like well what do I do to help myself I know mindfulness I do mindfulness not mm -hmm. really working helping yeah. a little bit not so much I'm doing meditations nah, nothing's mm -hmm. like sticking and then into my lap comes this thing called EFT okay. which is the emotional freedom technique or some people know it as tapping okay. and it's this really cool thing where it's you tap on your acupressure points and it's all around your head and face and then mm -hmm. some finger points and you tap while you're saying sort of things that are wrong that you want to let go so you could say like even though I'm feeling really depressed right now mm -hmm. I deeply and completely love accept and forgive myself mm -hmm. and you go through a round of tapping and it sounds hokey. It sounds so hokey. It's so hokey. It does sound woo woo, but I'm sure that's that it works. That does sound woo woo. It's like, eh, I don't know. I don't know about this. But I decided mm -hmm. to try it, decided to take a course in it. But I was like, well, you know, why not? Let's learn this. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered was it was helping. 
Wow. It was releasing these old traumas, releasing these blocks. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. And it became even more incredible as I started practicing with the other students in the class, because okay. with EFT, it's like with therapy, it's about the connection. Like we need, okay. we need to connect to others. So like when you're doing it with another person, the shifts are just so much greater. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that has been something that's been getting me from a point of like, I'm not depressed to a point of like, I'm feeling normal. I'm feeling happy, which is something I honestly, after becoming a mom, I just didn't feel like it was, that was going to happen for me ever. Wow, I love it. So EFT sounds like it is releasing the blockages um, internally. And is some of that linked to childhood trauma or how, how, how would you um, link the two? So I'm also reading uh, a book, uh, a lot of psychologists, like it's been the holy grail of trauma treatment, the, um, the Body Keeps the Score mm -hmm. by, uh, I, can't, I can never remember his first name. Uh, I just remember the last name, Van der Kolk. Okay. Um, and it actually supports why EFT works. The interesting part is a lot of the trauma that we experience, and it doesn't have to be like big, big T trauma, like, yeah. you know, severe abuse or mm -hmm. neglect or things like that. It could be a little T trauma of like, somebody said something really mean mm -hmm. to you and it just like stuck for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Is that a lot of these things, we, when our body experiences the trauma, mm -hmm. we go into either fight or flight or we go into a freeze mode. And regardless which mode you go into, your body's energy system is disturbed. And it's just, it's not integrating. It's not integrating things the way it's supposed to. And so it gets stuck inside of you. Okay. And if it's stuck for a long enough time, it actually can come out as physical symptoms. Like what we're finding now with a lot of um, trauma survivors is that they have a lot of physical symptoms. Like they have uh, gut issues, right? Mm -hmm. They have severe headaches or they have severe migraines. Mm -hmm. They might have things like autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. um, things like that happen. And what EFT does and a lot of other sort of like somatic body therapy for trauma does is it allows you to feel the touch, which makes you feel safe and activate the points and for the emotion to essentially to flow through you, for your body to be able to integrate it in a safe space, because all our bodies need is the safe place to integrate. And we integrate when we feel the physical touch. So okay. EFT is just one of the modalities that allows you to do it. And you can do it yourself once you learn it, because it's pretty easy. You can't hurt mm -hmm. yourself. No needles involved. All you're doing is, you know, you're picking points, you're tapping mm -hmm. lightly, you're not hurting yourself. Yeah. Um, and you are saying these things that you want to release. Because I was mm. always like, you know, people love mantras, right? Like, yes. it just never worked for me. I was kind of like, I can't connect yes. to this positive. I just can't, it's not working. <laughs> but with EFT, because I do the negative first, I can then, mm. con I can then do the, um, the mantra of like, I deeply and completely love and accept yes. and forgive myself because it feels more natural because I put it in like, well, I hate this about myself, but mm -hmm. I could still love myself despite all of it. And it's, I mean, it's a great feeling. And mm -hmm. it, what warms my heart is when I've been practicing with others is to hear from them that they felt so safe and yeah. so connected and they were able to finally release something that was stuck in them. And mm -hmm. oh my God, I mean, I've experienced it. And yeah. I thank the, uh, the people who have done that for me. And it's just such an amazing feeling to go from like, I will never get over this to being like, well, this is just a thing in life. Mm. I can tackle it. Mm. I love it. I love it. And just imagine how much baggage and trauma we all are. Like you said, it doesn't have to be, be a big trauma. It could be something small, but if it's yeah. important to you and if you're holding it inside, it's hard. It's, it's better for us to like actually name it voice it and do the EFT to, to completely detox yourself of that. So yeah. that's amazing. I like that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's been, it's been a revelation for me because I'm, you know, I'm all about therapy. I'm a therapist yes. by training, mm -hmm. but, and I think therapy is important and therapy helps so much. And I encourage everybody to go get therapy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is important, 
<laughs> but what I think is EFT actually pairs really well with therapy because with therapy, you go through, mm -hmm. through a um, process of self-discovery, right? You go yes. through that safe process of self-discovery where the traumas are and you mm -hmm. can talk about them and it can help to an extent to release them. But then where the EFT can pick up is it can take that trauma that you discovered and it can finally help your body integrate it and just get it out of your system and clear it. And clear some of the physical symptoms because I've cleared physical symptoms like I've been a horrible migraine sufferer like mm -hmm. uh, I would be what would be classified as a chronic migraine sufferer which was about 14 plus days out of the month I had some sort of wow. a degree of a migraine yeah. and it's it's debilitating and doing that when you have little kids who have mm -hmm. a lot of energy they require you to be on is really hard because the only way I could feel okay is if I mm -hmm. went into a room took all my medicine, put a mask on, put earplugs in and slept because wow. it was just the pain was so severe, right? So I went from having that about, I'd say between 14 to 20 days a month mm -hmm. to now having it less than five days a month. Wow. Right? And that's I all through, it. yeah, that's just through EFT. I wasn't doing anything else. Like when I was doing um, like medicine or supplements, like nothing was touching it. Nothing mm -hmm. was helping. But ever since I've done EFT and cleared some of these like bigger blockages, migraines just pretty much poofed. Wow. You know, I love I'll it. take it. I love So, okay. So do you, so you included this in your practice now as in your business or tell me a little bit about your business. Yeah. So I am having my little baby business and I was just starting out. So okay. now as a certified mom coach, I yeah. want to help moms primarily with postpartum depression and anxiety mm -hmm. to be able to clear these blocks and move into a motherhood where they're thriving and finding joy. So uh, my uh, coaching program, which is a three month program, is a blend of EFT and self-compassion work. Nice. So basically we go and we use EFT to clear a lot of the old traumas, a lot of the things mm -hmm. that are sitting and they're not clearing and basically making motherhood miserable. Mm -hmm. we, and then we're using self-compassion work to replace our inner critic voice that we all have that's nagging, nagging, nagging and creating all these issues and putting in a new, more compassionate voice. And mm -hmm. when we do all of that, when we release a lot of this, not only are we happier, but we can be better mothers. We can then finally integrate the gentle parenting techniques you've always dreamed of, but you can't because, well, yes. they're not listening and I'm going to yell at them, right? Yeah. The part is that when you clear the blocks and when you have a compassionate voice for yourself, you can have a compassionate voice for your children. That is my ultimate goal is to allow every mother who mm -hmm. wants to be that gentle, positive parent, but can't because of all this baggage from before mm -hmm. to be able to step into that role fully. I love it. How important do you think your practice is um, in connection with breaking um, I, what I call generational curses? How, how important do you think that is? When you I think it's very important. I actually view myself as uh, a generational cycle breaker in my yeah. family because my family has some oh, we some heavy baggage <laughs> yes. for generations. I can so relate. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's why here I am sitting with all my migraines and other issues, like mm -hmm. pulled all of that in. And I am uh, finding that using EFT and using self-compassion on myself, I am able to break a lot of the cycles that mm -hmm. my family was stuck in with this authoritarian parenting yes. of basically neglect, uh, not neglecting me in a physical sense, but neglecting my emotions, oh, which yes. is the big thing was kind oh, of like, yes. yeah, whatever, like it doesn't matter what you want. I'm going to try not to practice that with our kids, but it's hard because the thing is when you give kids choices, they kind of take it and run away with it. Yes. <laughs> I got to be able to handle that. And it's hard to handle when your inner child is still sitting there being mm -hmm. like, I wasn't allowed to do that. Why should you be allowed to do that? Yeah. Right. And I think my practice when uh, my mamas go through this program, it allows them to finally release and to soothe their inner child and be like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You didn't get that now. You can get this now yourself from, you know, from other people, even from yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pass it on to your children. Like we can break the cycle. It's hard. Yes. It's really hard, but we can do it. Yes. I, I love it. And there's so many um, mother, soon to be mothers or mothers that definitely need the service for sure. 
because yes. it's believe me it's one thing to say I am not going to be anything like my um my mother <laughs> right but yes. it's another thing to actually put in the work and that means that you have to go through the difficult inner child emotions bring when you're ready you have to bring them up and like really work through them because if not you'll find yourself that you're not even realizing it. You are actually repeating things from your childhood that you had no idea that you're actually doing. It's just like innate, you know? Yeah. So yeah, your services is definitely, definitely needed. Where can we find you online? All right. So online, you can find me on Instagram, which is where I've been the most active recently. And it's okay. at Parent on Board Coaching. Okay. And I post almost daily and try to post some motivational things and some educational things as well. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Parent on Board Coaching. Okay. And um, there will soon be a fully functioning website <laughs> at www.parentonboard.com. It, right now, if you go in there, it's just some of my blogs. I haven't been able to transition it to my coaching website yet. Um, mm -hmm. So the best place to find me and to really connect with me would be either through Facebook because I'm very active on it. Uh, it's on my phone. If you send me a direct message, I will answer. And same goes for Instagram. Direct message me, comment, comment on any of the posts. I will find you and I will answer you. So for now, those are the best ways. So just know that even though the uh, website isn't ready, the program is ready mm -hmm. and I am ready to accept clients and I am allowing clients to even have a free 60 minute EFT session to try it out for themselves to see what it's nice. like before they want to sign up uh, for the coaching package because it's a longer investment it's three months mm -hmm. like, you got to be ready to do the work and I want you to sort of see what EFT can do because yeah it can bring up some pretty deep-seated feelings you have to be yeah. comfortable with it but you also have mm -hmm. to know that I'm there I'm there to support you to ground you and to help you move through those feelings, but it might not be a comfortable process, kind of mm -hmm. like therapy, not yeah. comfortable at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But once you um, get to the other side, it's amazing. Yes. And it it's really good. Is. It feels so good. And it feels so good when you can see that, like, I didn't do the same things my parents did yes. to hurt my children. Because like, I know this personally, because that's exactly what came up for me was that I knew better. I have the psychology degree. I worked with kids yeah. and becoming a mother, I can't in my daily life mm -hmm. do what I'm preaching because there's these emotional blocks, these in wounds from when I was so little that were deep inside of me that I actually didn't know up until I became a mom, like becoming a mom just released it all. It's oh like a volcano, gosh. right? Yes. Like it just comes out and then you're like, I got to do the work. It's hard, but it, I think, yes, it makes such a difference in the world. It makes a difference in the world that we will be raising a generation that doesn't have to make the same mistake. They'll make new mistakes and we'll mm -hmm. make mistakes in, in our process, but that's okay. We'll clear some of this old garbage and put it to rest because yes. a lot of it doesn't work. It wasn't good for us. It wasn't good mm -hmm. for our parents either. Like, you know, there's no blame because a lot of them just yeah. didn't have any tools, mm -hmm. but we can be the ones that can clear it because we have the tools and it's amazing. Exactly. And I always say that it's not to blame my parents because the majority of them did the best that they could with what they had and with the knowledge that they had at the time. Yeah. So it's not to blame them, but it's to say it starts with me to break the cycles and to actually put in the work so that when, that when you do have children, or if, even if you do have children now, to, to just break it, break the cycles so that the next generation is better and then so on. It just continues the um, improvement down the line. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you 100%. <laughs> yeah. Maria, so what would be, actually, before I ask you this question, I noticed that um, when you discussed your postpartum depression, you had indicated like you, what really helped you was the blog. And I think of the blog as a way of journaling, believe it or not, because yeah. it's giving it a voice of what the things that you're going through and things like that. What would be your advice to a woman right now that is feeling off? They just had their, their child and they're, they're, they are feeling what you felt. What do you think that, what is your advice to them? 
Also, my advice would be to not be afraid to reach out for help because I think there's still a lot of stigma. People are scared and not without reason when you have social media posts popping up where somebody went to their doctor yes. and the nurse called CPS, like, you know, yeah. that doesn't make you want to come in and be open with your doctor and say, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage you to, yes, come into your doctor, to your OB and say, I am struggling. Please give me a therapist referral yeah. and make sure you get that therapist referral. Um, I would also say reach out to anyone in your community you can. Support is what gets you through it. It could be your partner, it could be your mom, your sister, your mm -hmm. friend, you know, another mom three doors down that you are friends with. It doesn't matter, but have a community. Mm -hmm. And yes, for me, writing helped because I'm, I'm a writer. I enjoy writing. But for somebody else, it might be drawing yeah. or it might be singing. It might be something else. But get your voice out there. That voice doesn't have to be speaking. Yes. It could be drawing. It could be doing something else. But get it out there. Get your emotions out there. Because the mm -hmm. more you get it out there, the more you get it out of your system, and the faster you're able to heal. Mm -hmm. But again, the biggest thing is do not do this on your own. Because yes. so many moms do it on their own. And that is where you fail. That is where I fail. Mm -hmm. That is where so many moms fail. It mm -hmm. is a dark and scary place because depression keeps you trapped. Yes. It keeps you trapped in this dark room, tells you nobody's there. No mm -hmm. one's going to help. This will never get better. Like you better just quit. Yes. And, but when you allow somebody in, you can hear another voice that will tell you that like, yes, it will get better. You're mm -hmm. valued. You're important. And the thing is, this may not be a, necessarily a normal response, so to speak, but it is a very common response especially nowadays because we do not live in supportive environments we live in these tiny families where it's usually just like the mom the dad and the baby yes. that is not support mm -hmm. we are used to being tribal we are oh yes we are used to communities mm -hmm. and not just communities we're used to other women around us we need other women around us yes. without other women we just we we think because mm -hmm. we need their support so yes Get that woman community, be it a, a mother group, whatever, yeah. but get that community, get that support. That is my biggest advice. Do all the other things, but support first. Yeah, support is so, so important. As a Even if you're not going through um, postpartum depression, it's so nice yeah. to have a community yeah. that understands. Yeah, yeah I, I think every mom needs support. Like I'm in a lot of... Um, stayed home mom groups because I'm yeah. basically stayed at home and I'm working from home. So I'm not like, you know, your traditional working mom going to the office. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is, uh, you know, very similar. Most women yeah. go through that. I went through that. You feel really lonely. It's kind yeah. of like, well, I am with this human all day. Why do we feel so lonely? Because the connection we have and the exchange we have with our children is not the same as the connection you have with another woman mm -hmm. or, or a man, whatever, whatever friend, but another adult peer. It is not yes. the same and we need to get ourselves out there because yeah, depression develops when you are isolated and you're by yourself. Like mm -hmm. That's what happens because that's what depression does. It traps you. And yes. if you are already trapped physically, then your head is going to be like, well, I'm going to trap you mentally too. So support, mm -hmm. get out there, connect, 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 whether virtual, yes. physical, whatever's at your disposal, but connect, connect, connect. I love it. Thank you for that. Thank you. Now, my last question for you is overall, regardless of what predicament a woman is in, I know that we, um, what do you think is your biggest takeaway advice besides community? Oh, my biggest takeaway advice is do not neglect self-care. Yes. Whatever that looks for you. I know there's a lot of people struggling, still struggling with the fact that self-care is selfish, that I should not be putting myself first. I have all these things to take care of, like the house, the baby, the husband, the everything. No, you come first because if you really are in that role where you're taking care of a lot of things and, you know, moms are caregivers, yeah. I want you to come at it from a place of service, not servitude. I want you to want to give that service, right? Like we want to take care of our children because we love them. We care for them, we want to feed them, clothe them give them safety. We might even want to take care of certain things for a partner because mm -hmm. that's how we show our love. That's right. But 
when it crosses the threshold from being in service out of love to servitude of I have to, I want you to step away That's and right. I want you to be like, what do I need to take care of myself? Like, are, is my life really going to fall apart if I'm going to have dishes for an extra day versus me going and sitting in the bath right now and catching up on some show or reading a book? No, mm -hmm. the dishes can wait. You can't because That's the right. more you neglect yourself, the less you're able to take care of everyone, the more upset you're going to get the more irritated you're going to get with your whole family. It, it's just the, a cycle mm -hmm. that it, it's not good, not a good cycle. So please put yourself first. Putting yourself first does not mean you're neglecting your children because I've heard that one before. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does not mean that. It doesn't mean you go out partying every night and getting drunk or anything like that. Yeah. That is not self-care. That That's is self-destruction. Right. Thank you, so Thank you for, not, for sliding that in, Maria. Yeah, let's, let's not conflate the two. That is absolutely not self-care. <laughs> self-care is what you need. A coffee date with a friend. Yeah. Um, you know, getting your nails done for some. For some people, it's a run. For some people, it's a nap. For other people, it's a bath. For another person, it's going to a shelter and cuddling with a cat. Whatever. Yes. Whatever it is that actually soothes your soul, make sure you make time for that. Because then you will be a vibrant member of your family, of your community, and you will you will come at them from a place of service and not servitude. And you're going to feel so much better inside. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I just want to say, Maria, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to chat with me. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Oh. Oh, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this. And I am so glad that it will reach other women and empower other women because I am also all about empowering women, especially moms, because I've seen so much disempowerment and I felt it too. And it, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And I think we should all stand here and empower each other to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you.